call this meeting to uh, order. Uh, this is the meeting of the uh, Reading Municipal Light Department Board of Commissioners. Is being visit being videotaped at the arm of the offices at 2:30 Main Street. Uh, yeah, 2:30 Main Street, 2:30 Ash Street, Reading. This meeting is being videotaped for distribution to the community television stations in North Reading, Wilmington, and Linfield. Our code of conduct: the arm of the Board of Commissioners recognizes the importance of hearing public comment and at the discretion of the chair on items on the official agenda as well as on items, items, items not on the official agenda. We ask that all questions and comments from the public be directed to the chair and that all parties, including members of the RMLD board, act in a professional and courteous manner when addressing the board or responding to comments. Once recognized by the chair, all persons addressing the board shall state their name and address prior to speaking. It is the role of the chair to maintain order in all public comment or ensuing discussion. So tonight we just got one item on the agenda. Now, I will explain why we're having this meeting uh, because it has been questioned. First off, we need something more, a public statement. We've talked among ourselves, but I need actually a public statement to go forward to the, what we're going to say to the subcommittee next week. Um, I, maybe let me back up here. I should acknowledge our two commissioners elect who are in the, in the audience tonight. <laughs> <laughs> They've been reelected, but the uh, final vote has not been certified yet, so uh, they, have, they are not able to be sworn in. But they are here as uh, commissioners elect, and I will allow them to participate as, as citizens of the town. So, so anyway, I, so basically, you know, we need some. I need we need some sort of public statement now. Since the white paper has come out, um, and Colleen, can you tell everybody can get everybody can get the white paper? It's still on the website. Yes. You tell them where they where they can go to get the white paper. Anybody who would, so the public knows. On uh, the RMLD.com website under meetings on the left hand column, and then you select Board of Commissioners. And it's up left hand side under Quick Links. Okay. So basically, you know, and I, I recommend anybody who, you know, follows the the, di the debate, that they do read the white paper, um, in detail, because uh, it's a very informative uh, document in terms of that. So basically with that, you know, it's really going to be what the commission wants to do here because we have so so control over the the bottom line is what we want to do. Uh, and so I'm looking for, let me, let me, let me finish and I will recognize you. So what I'm looking for tonight is just a, some sort of uh, public statement as to what we think we want to do be going, going forward at this point. So Rock, you want to speak? Yes, I just thought for the uh, viewing audience, uh, it might be helpful just for them to understand the, the background in terms of how this issue got raised and what we mean by payment to the town. So okay, all right. So this, the issue was originally drawn up a, back in um, April, April of 2017, a town meeting, as an instructional motion. Um, at that point, the motion was to instruct the selectmen to look into it. Um, you know, I raised at that particular meeting the idea of the subcommittee, which has existed since the 80s, and never met them until the until the uh, the fall. And basically, the selectmen uh, went along with that, and the subcommittee was formed, and it consisted of two members of the CAB, two members of the commission, which is myself and and uh, Commissioner Elect Stempeck, uh, is the two, and then we also have a member of the board of selectmen, which is Dan Edzinger, the uh, selectman. And so really what it is is the, we're allowed to earn 8% as the bottom line. That's the maximum we're allowed to, and correct me if I'm wrong, if I say something wrong, please. That's why the department is here. We're allowed to earn 8%. From that 8% is really the bottom line. That number goes to two different places. Um, one can go for capital, which is uh, the capital funds, which are very important to maintain the system. The other part is the return on investment to the town. And that number is around 2.7. Got the right number on that? 2.7 is the right number? Go ahead. Go ahead. That's why you're here. <laughs> no, I just want to clarify. It's 8% of net plant, first of all. Wendy, why don't you come up? Would you? Come up. Sorry. Come up and speak. Yeah. <clears throat> Okay, so just to clarify, um, the uh, RMLD is 
allowed to earn 8% of net plant on their bottom line, the rate of return. Mm -hmm. And it is the RMLD's discretion to use that 8% on whatever the business sees fit. Now, we've always uh, used it as adding to our capital infrastructure. Mm -hmm. So that's where, you know, that's where everybody gets this idea that that's where we need to spend the money. That's not accurate. We don't have to spend the money on that. But there is nothing that says that we also have to spend it on this um, pilot payment to the town of Reading. Return on investment. Return on oh, investment. Return on investment. Return investment. Return investment. Good. But if we don't spend the money on the capital, we cannot maintain the system properly. That's correct. I just was letting you know that we don't have to spend right. it only on that. And I think that I think that is the critical point where we are now at. Um, you know, I know the department has been looking at the issue for a couple of years now, a few years, and basically we. And this is one of the things has happened by forcing the commission now to look at this. It's kind of it's kind of come to the conclusion that the present formula is not sustainable in the future, because we'll be giving too much to the town, and just not enough will be going back into the capital. Um, is what is where we are now at at this point. Um, so, you know, we need to. You know, one of the things that, we, you know, we can do is just one of the options we have is to do nothing. And you know, always option to do nothing. Just leave the present formula in place. But, you know, again, that doesn't, that doesn't solve the problem of the fact that we could be running out of capital, not maintaining the system. Uh, at some point, we'd have to look at and study what we're going to do and how we're going to resolve that. And, and if that means... I'm going to say it. If that means we've got to freeze the payment of the town, we're going to have to freeze the payment of the town. I can't afford to jeopardize. I can't afford to jeopardize the, the department and the Mr. maintenance Chair, of the department. Could I add one more thing uh, to that? Sure. So, uh, you know, to clarify, we've always, well, we have been consistently in the past five years spent more than the rate of return on our capital infrastructure. Just want to clarify that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, anywho, so. One of the things I'm looking for is is something, a short term. I got. I think we should be focused on only the next two years on the re, on the rate of return, with the idea that in year three, there is some sort of study and we make some sort of adjustment to, to the formula, at at this point. So that's that's where I'm at. I still continue to think that, what I presented from before, with the two and a half, at the as the floor. I mean, the CPI is 2.51, I understand. So I'm not, and with the idea that, that the, the, the ceiling be the 5%, only for the next two years, with, after that, there'd be a study with, a full, with an adjustment as to how this is going to go. So I'll open it up for, I'll open up for comments from everybody now at this point. So. Yeah, so. <coughs> yeah. This isn't the language, but so I think that, there's two things, Bill, I would see. Mm -hmm. is share. One is, uh, I think, for presentation to the town, to town meeting, however this gets uh, you know, communicated, we need to sort of summarize, because I think we started with a process of trying to find ways to increase the payment to the town. And mm -hmm. in that process, we discovered that uh, <coughs> There were a lot of other issues that we were That's dealing right. with, with respect exactly to it. disruptive technologies, with respect to the uh, growth in the payment, which is now mm -hmm. counting both payments above the line, below the line, 2.7 million, which uh, I think if people uh, have been listening into some of the meetings, they realize that's the largest payment that uh, is being made to any towns uh, in the northeast. I, I guess is that the serve area that we looked at. So. Uh, so, all of that and the need to continue to invest in the capital infrastructure, I think m giving a very short summation like that of the words to the town, because it's uh, the foundation, I think, really is uh, we have a lot of commitments that we have to uh, honor and to make this run as efficiently right. as it has. And also the, uh, the idea, I think this has been a bad winter, but a good one in terms of people understanding the importance of reliability of the utility. and. Uh, the rest restoration of power. You can't prevent power from going out, but the way the RMLD has reacted. So we don't want to jeopardize that. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think people that I've talked to in the community know the, the rates are very favorable. So I, yep. I would say <coughs> combining both things, one is a, you know, a very 
short uh, statement of you know, why we are in a position to make an increased payment, followed by something, some recommendation that and we can talk about that. I think that's kind of the framework, something for two years that's mm -hmm. fixed and then the mid boundaries and then a, a study to occur during that time. Right, absolutely. Other comments? Um, well, we have a couple members of the public here, don't we? <laughs> Do you want to, despite their uh, their sort of uh, nebulous status, do you want to allow them to sit in the uh, the public chairs over there anyway? Or? Yeah. I mean, I'd like to hear you go to the microphone. You can come to the microphone. And, and while they're getting situated, you both. You could both come. That might be a first. So, a couple. Share this microphone, if I may. Share it. So, yes. I guess a couple thoughts on this. Where this is. First of all, the. We're, we're, I guess you're, we're, we came here to discuss, you, you convened the meeting to discuss the payment to the town, but the agenda item says something that's hard to understand, even to me. Discussion on ROI, disposition thereof, and effect on funding of the RMLD capital needs. It never says that we're convened to talk about the town payment. So I think if, if that was the real agenda, then we should have agen listed it that way so the public could have seen what the purpose of this meeting was and interested parties could have come. Um, you know, and I, and I thought that the reason we had a subcommittee was that it convened and it would recommend forward to the full board, not the full board telling, you know, then recommending what the subcommittee should recommend back to the full board. So those are just some procedural, um, I feel like it's confusing to the public and even to me as somebody who's supposed to know um, what we're doing here. Um, but to get back to the core issue of what should we do, if I, er, if I understood the two of you correctly that you feel like we don't make any change for two years, and then during which we study what to do after that. Is that the, your bottom line? Is that what you're saying? So That's there's not I'm an saying. increase in the next two years beyond what would have already happened. Right. The yeah. only thing I'm proposing is right now CPI is two and a half. Yep. Two and a half, two point five one percent, as I understand it. So I would say we keep the floor. Uh, we have a floor of two and a half percent, but we have a we have a, a ceiling of five percent. But I don't know what that means. I mean. I don't know what that means in terms of are we giving the town more money than we otherwise would have had there been no process, yes or no? No, we would not be giving the town if any it's more money. The same as if we had never convened any of these. Right. The only thing I'm saying is we have a cap. If if the CPI goes goes to six percent. Okay. So if anything, it's it puts a if anything, it limits what the increase will be over the next two years. Potentially. Yeah. But I it think certainly doesn't. It, sorry. It. <laughs> let me see if I can boil it down in my own Go mind. Ahead. <laughs> It, the net result is there is no increase beyond what we would have already been doing. The only thing we've done is put a ceiling on on, yeah, on it. That's what I'm May saying. I, uh, that's yeah, go yeah, ahead. I think the other <coughs> difference historically for the last three, four, five years, as everyone knows, the CPI is at 1% or 1.5% right. or something. So it's been increasing gradually. The expectation is, as Bill said, it's going to go up maybe to 2.5%. And with that climbing, uh, we, so we'll be paying more than right. historically over this last few years. However, it's the same formula that was already in place. Yes, and it's okay. just putting a fence around in how case high it could go. Yeah, yeah, blows through the roof right. in a nine percent right. inflationary yeah. craze. Yes, right. exactly. okay. I mean, it certainly sounds. I mean, stepping back, it feels to me like having done. Thank you, for Colleen, for the. And I guess it was John that asked for the white paper. Am, am I getting this wrong? And Colleen, you got it done. And I think we all learned a lot from that. And you know, one thing that stu stu stood out to me was that RMLD is making the largest payment in the state of Massachusetts to its municipality, if, if I'm not mistaken, which I think is a, is a salient fact that would have been great to have known that a year ago at the floor town meeting when people were talking about this. You know, now now it's a lot of these things are clear. It's the highest in the state. It goes up automatically, even though some of the others are fixed. If I understand, Taunton is fixed. Is that right? I don't mean to put you on the spot. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know, some of them are, it's just X every year. It doesn't go up. Ours does go up. Um, so I feel like. Some goes down. And some goes down. Um, you know, and that RMLD is a really important force for economic development in the region, um, and that the capital needs are very great, and the job that's being done here is really great. And these are important things. So it's hard for me to see that there's a problem that we have in terms of not giving the town enough and that indeed it's hard to see why we would go up. Um, so I, I guess all of that is to circle around and say that what the two of you are saying 
makes sense to me. If uh, I could make a comment as well, this is uh, John Stempak, 65 Avalon Road. Uh, you good, know, good. We, you identified we, yourself. <laughs> yes, yeah, so the first time. It's great. <laughs> um, and, and thank you, Reading, for voting for me. I really do appreciate it. And, and for uh, Dave uh, Hennessy is here as well. Thank you as well. <laughs> Seven Pine Ridge Road, Dave Hennessy. <laughs> um, you know, we've been told that the RMLD has not been keeping up with the increase in, um, in rates that have uh, occurred over the last couple of years. But by the same token, uh, you know, the CPI index has affected everybody, not just the RMLD. Uh, so if the cost of living isn't increasing by over 1% per year, then uh, th that becomes a, a, a strange and, uh, argument to use. Over the history of the last 25 years, uh, we've been at a 2.31% rate of increase. So on the average, we have been keeping up and maintaining uh, basically that 2.3%, which, as the Commission members have uh, uh, already mentioned, is the largest payment in Massachusetts to uh, any municipality. So uh, I think we've, uh, we've tried to do our job uh, as well as we possibly can in contributing to the town. And I would also say that uh, up until uh, before uh, our new, our, our general manager, Colleen O'Brien, uh, was here, uh, the town uh, or RMLD had not reinvested in a lot of capital uh, into the plant, which was sorely needed. And we were beginning to feel the effects of that, in both in terms of transformers blowing up, in terms of poles falling down uh, or going rotten. There were many, many different things uh, that were not being taken care of. Uh, and they really, so now we're basically playing catch up. And we have a very sophisticated uh, mechanism for bringing in uh, consultants who did, consultants from the industry who laid out a six year plan for how we should approach this in a stepwise fashion. And we're implementing it in a very professional manner. It's all very factual. Everything is laid out. Anyone who would like to see it, we'd be happy to go over with you anytime. And you can see that this is not conjecture. It's not innuendo. These are things that are needed to maintain the safety and the reliability of the RMLD for all of our um, uh, end use customers in all of our communities that we serve. So we're really trying to do the right thing here. And irrespective of trying to find more cash, and by the way, I might just mention, we have to be very careful we don't go negative on the cash flow. We have a certain amount of money that we can make mandated by the state, and the last thing we want to do, just like you and your business, you don't want to go negative uh, on the bottom line, and asking for more and more money from the RMLD, uh, taking away from our capital uh, and reinvestment is going to do exactly that. We don't want that to happen, and I don't think any of you want it to happen either. Thanks, John. I agree with everything that was said so far. Just a point of clarity, um, Chair. Mm -hmm. Phil, uh, or Chair. Chair. Okay. That's fine. <laughs> How's the timing work? Is it two? Y it's two years. Right. So this. But when does the when would the study start and when would it end? And were you so saying that this would start? Uh, so I visualize it. And you know, one of the things that uh, we we ought to talk about again at a future meeting is going to a calendar year, calendar year end. That is an issue I think we should Absolutely. bring back to the bring back to the commission again. I visualize that this would start as of July the first of this year, and then because that would be consecutive over the towns, over the towns uh, fiscal year. So it would be two years starting from July first of 2018. It would so take July. It would take that long to it, do. Well, I don't know. I mean, that's. I'm getting two years. Yeah. Two to years. Do this, I'm sorry. To do the study. To, that's reasonable. Two years it would take. Two years. To oh, do not it. to do the study. I no. don't think. Yeah. Um, I I think it's a reasonable time to to let the towns also digest what's going on here too. I don't want to. You know. I don't want to July the first say hey. You know. <laughs> I don't think that's fair to the town. I think you know over the yeah. two year period. So they well, understand. If I may, even with a two-year period, if we find that it's impacting our need for additional capital investment, I think we need to be ready to yes, uh, change it. We need to be flexible and, again, preserve the reliability and safety of our system. I mean, if we get a, if we get a major storm, I mean, <coughs> all you got to do is look at, you know, Puerto Rico. Or if Rico, a substation uh, Puerto Rico, goes out. A substation right. goes down, you know, or even the ice storm that took place out in, out in the West area a few years ago. Yes. I mean, if that happens, you know, there is th that money is going to be needed for capital, <coughs> right, all the way around. Yeah, that, that's why I, I wanted to ask the question about. Um, I think you said you put a floor in of two and a half percent. Yeah. 
should we should we do that because if we find something that like what you just talked about happens we might not be able to do it right well I'm, my anticipation is CPI right now is 2.51 percent I don't visualize CPI going down in the next two years yeah I don't either yeah. because you know I, you know I've heard in the the Fed is look talk talking about raising interest rates four times we've got potentially trade wars now going on too at this point so the cost of things could be going up potentially so I, I don't visualize the the CPI getting lower going below the two and a half percent no no well I, I think that uh, as long as there's language uh, within our defined statement right that says Absolutely. that uh, if there's uh, un unanticipated uh, catastrophes or other things right. that exactly. acts of nature that occur mm -hmm. that all these bets are off I mean we are not going to be supplying on a guaranteed basis um, uh, additional money to the town if we have a catastrophe that has occurred and I think that's just a reasonable man argument just common Absolutely. sense Phil can I make a couple? Go ahead. go ahead yep okay I just want to make a couple of clarifications so that we're all on the same page um, we are allowed to make up to 8% of net plant okay but I just want to remind everybody you don't always want to do that because when you're raising it to eight, you are increasing the rate. So a lot of these utilities, as Dave is talking about, have fixed um, volunteer pilot payments. Some of them are decreasing because uh, one of the largest uh, methodologies for calculation would be a percent of kilowatt hour sales. So similar to Reading Light, kilowatt hour sales are flat and now declining. And so there are other utilities that may have gotten more money in the previous years than they're getting now. Some plants do a percentage of net plant. Right now our net plant is going to be climbing for a while because of the infrastructure uh, in the capital outlay. And that would mean that you could, the 8% of net plant would go up. That means you can make a little bit more money. But because sales are going down, the only way to make the 8% is to raise the rate. Okay, so I just want to make sure that everybody understands the balance of that. So if we are being guided as the standard for this size system to be investing approximately $8 million a year, and you're trying to keep your rate of return eight or less to be fair to the public, but to also make your commitments, and you're paying the town on an exponential rate, that convergence is coming very quickly. Um, and that's, that's the concern, and, and I think that's what I showed in, in that PowerPoint presentation. But I just um, want to just make sure we're all on the same page with that, because it will appear that we, we're, we can make a little bit more money with the net plant going up. But you've got to raise the rate to get it. Hmm. So we want to stay in the middle of the pack. I would think a uh, competitively low rate right. for all the municipals in the state. We're comfortable in the mil middle of the pack, and I think that's where we need to stay there. Yeah, and I think the one of the other things too is that, and even, even the selectmen in talking about the override talked about economic development. Yeah, and, and that was a big that's a big issue, you know. And I think it's you know staying in the middle of the pack plays into that too, to, to the economic development, uh, development. So I think that's right. Um, as I was listening to Colleen and you, Phil, on that point, I mean, I think when the utility gives more to the town, it comes out of rates a zero-sum game I wish you know I hope we can have the same conversation by the way when people are here who are been have been following and then working on this issue all year there's been a bunch of people who have and I think they should be here and able to come up and so I hope we have the same conversation during the subcommittee and then during the uh, the meeting and not just decide we're not deciding anything tonight but still because I'd like everybody to be able to have this conversation as in a public forum where everybody's here um, but that we, we, we don't want to raise rates we don't want to hurt economic development we don't want to take money out of people's pockets from rates just to add another hundred grand to a town budget and I think also it was great news that we passed the override in this town which means that a lot of pressure is off that wasn't in place a year ago when this came before town meeting it was not at all clear that that would happen and I know that the citizen who brought it forward you know had real concerns as a lot of us did how are we gonna plug holes in the town's budget and well now we have the answer that, that it passed and, and the, 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 the situation is different now so maybe we don't even need to so that's all
Yeah, I just want to go back to a point that Dave made. So I, I think he's right in the respect that <coughs> even though I think it's out of the interest of expediting the process, uh, <coughs> we did appoint a, a subcommittee. Uh, we have new leadership at the selectman level, uh, and we have a cab that you know should vote their uh, conscience and, and, and vote based on their town needs. Mm -hmm. So. I guess what I'm thinking is that maybe we provide some guidance because one of the problems that I see is we've been sort of stuck in, you know, expectations on the side of the town as to what we might be able to do and the realities that have been revealed as we've looked at this closer which became the white paper in terms of what we are obligated to do and then the realities of what Colleen has just articulated. Right. Mm -hmm. So uh, what I'm sort of envisioning is maybe a process where when, when the subcommittee meets, uh, you and John, you and as the representatives, would be able to serve up what, whatever we land on as, as right. ideas to right. move it forward. And then secondly, uh, perhaps we can also, which I think would, it's an open meeting, but maybe uh, allow more uh, participation from the participants in terms of answering questions and so forth, all with the idea that, you know, we, we, we then expedite the process, but not... Uh, somehow uh, minimize the value of the mm -hmm. subcommittee because yeah. uh, I think the subcommittee still has an obligation to, to make a decision as a group because they represent not just the, the board. Mm -hmm. And then out of that, I, the earlier co comment I made, I think whatever that decision is and then the board's vote, I do think we need a communications piece uh, from the town of writing and other places that, you know, I think there's three pieces. One is, I, I don't know how clear we've been to everybody in writing and other towns on what our historical contributions have been. You know, I didn't add it up, but it's obviously millions of dollars, which I, I just think we're not trying to pat ourselves on the back, but let, letting people know the value of, of our MLD's contribution. Mm -hmm. Secondly, the uh, <coughs> that two-year uh, recommendation, if that's what the subcommittee approves. And then thirdly, um, you know, kind of the path forward uh, with the study and everything, and, mm -hmm. you know, hopefully a one-page document that well, yeah. people could have because the, the white paper is extremely interesting but it, it doesn't deal with uh, you know everything on one page and I think that would be helpful yeah okay for the discussion thank you okay Good. all right any other comments so if not I'll entertain a motion to adjourn I think I got the sense of where the Commission wants to go yeah could I just uh, yeah. in, in the interest of uh, clarity maybe uh, if one of us could, uh, so I guess, are, is that, are, are we looking to do that, Mr. Chair, as far as bringing it back, that kind of a, a recommendation? Yeah, that would be, the, and I visualize this as a, as a starting point. Yeah. This is the starting point. What I'm visualizing, to bring this back and say, this is what we think we can do. Okay. And, and then we go from there. Okay. Would you, you mind know? just repeating that, because I want to make sure we've all heard it the same way uh, in terms of the just the main pieces so we have the so the main the main piece would be that the floor for the increase and this is going to be for the next two years only for the next two years the floor would be the two and a half percent the ceiling would be the five percent should we have a major catastrophe or a major event let's use the word major event uh, then we, th we would have to look at, you know, uh, adjust, uh, adjustments to those numbers in terms of that. And, at, you know, and then after two years, we would have the study done and we would need to relook at the formula because the present formula, even in its present form, is not sustainable long term. Can I ask a question? So we're we're talking about uh, pay, uh, payments for the payments that we've already made, but payments in FY19, yes, and payments in FY20, and then there'll be uh, right. I'm visualizing the payments would start with the as of July 1st of 2018. Those payments that go forward from that point on. That yeah, point. So forward. that's FY20, and then right. FY19, then FY20. Right now. Right. Uh, well, just, yep. Uh, so FY18 is going to be based on the current. Is based upon the current the current formula. Right. Which is cost of living. And right. 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 CPI for. And then the, the this would potentially uh, be effective as of July 1st, 2018. 
and then we'd adjust if we go to a calendar year we just adjust it right yeah there'd be some sort of adjustment I, I just um, re regardless of the of the town payment it, we still have this convergence issue so I should probably get on the study yes okay. yes. <laughs> yes so um, we can talk a little bit more about RFP or how we want to right. uh, carve out the scope of the study but uh, essentially it, it that's just one piece of it we have a an overall uh, questions that we need to, to look at right. as part of the strategic plan right yeah and I think uh, you, you, you hit on the point uh, Phil I think the language needs to be clear around that the intent is to follow through with those payments but uh, whether it's a catastrophe or just a fiscal uh, need within the RMLD in order for us to run the railroad correctly, right. that payment could be reduced or, or eliminated. Uh, hopefully that won't be necessary. Right. I just have one, one question, if I may. Sure. Um, do we have a sense of how many, so this is guaranteeing a, at least a 2.5% increase in FY19 and FY20, right? Correct. Mm -hmm. How many municipal utilities in the state are doing similar things where they're guaranteeing 2.5% or more a year? At this point, do we know versus it's flat or declining um, or peg to rates, which are, I mean, peg like to. Like I said, er everybody's methodology is different. It could be that the, the plant value is going up. It could be the kilowatt hour sales are going up or down. Some of them have a flat rate uh, locked in for 10 years. Um, you know, there's, there's a whole bunch of different methodologies. I think I sent you the APPA. It doesn't list what everyone does. It just lists the the types of the things. types of the types of calculations that are used. Because um, I mean, arguably, it's very generous. I mean, even continuing the status quo is is relatively generous. Just yes. Wendy's nodding back there, so I, I take your word for it. There really you know isn't I mean? any for anyone you know. for us to compare to. It's um, mm -hmm. it's an outlier. We're, and, we're, uh, we're the highest and also have the highest set increase that we're proposing and, for the next two years. And, you know, and, and in all truthfulness, this is something maybe should have been dealt with several years ago right. by this commission. I didn't, I didn't realize that, you know, we'd even hit, hit a point. It never even occurred to me right. that we'd hit a point where this is unsustainable. So. Uh, all the years I've been here. Yeah. Okay. Well. But it's forced us to look at the issue. <laughs> yeah. You want to keep going, Dave? I'm, I'm good. I think I think you know we'll we'll have the same conversation at the subcommittee and then at, at our full board meeting whenever we do whatever we're going to do. So right. we may not need to continue, but no, I think we all understand what the issues are. Yeah, the only thing listening to all the inputs, I guess, and again, since we're not making a decision tonight, may, maybe in the subcommittee we can be clear that we're still wrestling with. Uh, I, I can understand the the benefit of doing two years, FY19 and 20, but if if you think about it, we want to we want to add a sense of urgency to this topic, both from the purpose of getting the study done, and also two years out is a long time. We we don't have an idea what the revenue line. We know we have a, kind of a sloping complaint, so maybe we make it a, a FY18 we, as usual. FY19 we guarantee two and a half to five, and then we that's look at it at that point. Yeah, maybe that's. And I maybe we can renew it a year. I think you you've got to give the town two years. Give them enough. You got to give them two years. Sure. I thought this gentleman already had a chance to speak. <laughs> <laughs> just can't stop. <laughs> Isn't there any other member of the public Todd who? Stempeck, 65 Avalon Road. Um, I, I think that the study, my, my sense, is that the study could be conducted much faster than a year. Uh, and I think there is a sense of urgency to do it. And I think the commission should get on with it as quickly as possible. Uh, this is something, by the way, that's not just happening to Reading. Uh, it's happening all, to all utilities across the United States. Uh, there's been a decrease in terms of kilowatt hour usage because of technology and enhancement and lower electricity use from LED bulbs and uh, AC in industrial drives. And everyone's trying to cut down their, uh, the amount of electricity they use and becoming much more efficient. And it's a wonderful thing. We're becoming much more efficient. Uh, but what that Im impacts are uh, organizations that are fixed cost per pretty much like the RMLD. You know, you, many utilities have a significant amount of fixed cost. And so these payments that uh, continually go up, and that's what we're talking about in the convergence, is if your revenue is going like this and your costs are going up in terms of contributions, at some point you can't sustain 
uh, your fixed costs in terms of labor and reinvestment and capital, et cetera. So I would suggest that uh, we don't guarantee two years, that we do the study, and if we find that it's happening faster than we think, then we modify it. We'd be flexible to modify it. I don't believe that we should write anything, or that the commission, excuse me, should write anything uh, in concrete uh, that will we'll do the right thing for both organizations as much as we possibly can. Thank you. Okay. All right. We'll see what we'll see what this upcommittee says. I'll bring it bring it up. <laughs> okay. All right. Any other comments? Any other comments from the audience? <laughs> Is there a date, uh, Mr. Chair, for the subcommittee? Yes, we're meet it's next Wednesday on the eleventh at five thirty. So and then the so full board meeting is the following Thursday, so the 19th, yep. the Tuesday. Yep. What was, what's the date for that? It's the 11th. <laughs> it's the 11th is the subcommittee meeting. And, and the board is the 17th. The 17th, yeah. And is is that the 17th or the 19th? It's the 17th. The 17th? It's a Tuesday. It's a Tuesday, okay. Okay. And is the, uh, are we efforting to have something for town meeting? Or just a report. I think that's something that'll be discussed at the subcommittee. Yeah. Okay. Depends upon where everybody where everybody is at that point. Certainly, yeah. the the board of selectmen I understand is are supposed to discuss this ne at their next meeting, which is the tenth, from what I understand. Uh, the CAB is kind of waiting until after the subcommittee at that point for their discussion, and we'll see where it is. I, I just <coughs> want to take one last shot because I'm not sure. We I have a good sense of what we really want to serve up to the subcommittee. It sounds like we have an I well, I'm not sure if we have the exact idea, but we've talked about what we would do over a two year period. Now, is everybody in favor of that as kind of the framework? And the only thing we're talking about is whether, you know, it's a we'll guarantee it lest there be a severe issue, or are we saying something less than that like this is the formula, but you know we reserve the right to do it at any time of day, which is a different kind of. I mean, maybe that gets hammered out. At the I think that gets maybe gets yeah. Maybe that's better. I think that's than trying to say what we've come to a consensus, which yeah. Well, I just we're kind of circling person. around it, but I just didn't want it to be served yeah, yeah. up as a, a as guarantee. Okay, so I think this is this is the starting point. Yep. This is the starting point. Maybe somebody should go to the Tuesday select select board. Selectman meeting. Um, I don't know. Are you volunteering? No, I mean I could. I could, or I think Tom. You know, any of you are probably better at this than I am. But um, I don't know, Tom, if you or somebody. I don't want to put you on the spot. Yeah. Why don't one? one. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I could go, but um, maybe I'll go and sit in the audience. But I just think somebody should be but there. Yeah, it's like I'm happy to go. So I may have a commitment then, in which case. Okay. The only. The only thing I, I warn you is they may try to pull you into the discussion, so just be careful. But that's fine. I mean, Whoever I think goes. it's, you know, Whoever we're public goes. bodies and it's okay Whoever to goes. discuss things, you know. Yeah. I mean, I think things got off the rails last year and it didn't have to happen. And yeah. um, I think just going to their meetings and likewise, it just, just understand yeah. the, the issues. The rails because there was some other, the uh, well, I know. different people interpreted things differently. Yes, that's, I know, but so still, I think. <laughs> All right, so Dave, mm -hmm. we can connect and see which okay. one of us has the opportunity yeah. to go. Okay. But I do think it's a good idea because uh, I mean they're going to want to know. They're going to. It's it's confusing. I've found some of this confusing. So you know, I mean, it's just it's complicated and exactly. understanding what our mission is and what our issues are okay. is important. I'm definitely not available. I can tell you that. Text. I, I still got 45 and yet left to go between now and the 15th. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. All right, very good. Do I hear a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Seconded? Second. All those in favor, raise your right hand. We're adjourned. Thank you, everybody. <laughs>